Lockheed Martin produces some of the deadliest technology on the planet. Their products are used in every major military conflict around the world, but one fighter jet in particular combines unbelievable engineering with deadly precision. Today, we're looking at the insane engineering of the F-22 Raptor. Though it was only produced between 2005 and 2011, the F-22 Raptor made serious waves in the world of military technology. The fifth-generation F-22's unique combination of stealth, speed, agility and situational awareness combined with lethal long-range air-to-air and air-to-ground weaponry makes it the best air dominance fighter in the world. Similar to the space race, the F-22 was originally born from a competitive streak with the Soviet Union. The Air Force appreciated that the Soviet Union could catch up with the F-15 and F-16, the formidable air superiority pairing developed in the 1970s. In the early 1980s, it began to pursue the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program, geared towards producing a revolutionary air superiority platform that would include stealth as well as a wealth of technological advances. Two teams made it to the prototype stage, producing the YF-22 and the YF-23. The YF-22 won the competition and went into production and testing in 1997. The Raptor first entered service in late 2005 and immediately began dominating warfighting exercises. But the problems faced by the F-22 were immense. Any innovative new aircraft faces delays and cost overruns associated with managing new technologies. The F-22, however, ran into one of the most comprehensive military technological shifts since the dawn of the jet age, the digitization of warfare that ensued in the 1980s and the 1990s. This was over and above the normal problems associated with creating the world's first supersonic stealth airframe. Things were further complicated by the tragedies of September the 11th, 2001. The US was suddenly fighting with individuals who had virtually no military technology and no anti-aircraft weapons to speak of. This made the exorbitant cost of research and testing for the F-22 suddenly unfeasible. There was no point in producing weapons that were far too advanced for the current style of warfare. Throughout the 2000s, the need for F-22s was debated due to rising costs and the lack of relevant adversaries. In December 2011, the 195th and final F-22 was built and sent into action. Though it was a short-lived project, the F-22 made a huge impact on the world around it. The plane can reach Mach 2 and is loaded with tons of devastating weaponry. The F-22 Raptor possesses a sophisticated sensor suite allowing the pilot to track, identify, shoot and kill air-to-air -air threats before being detected. Significant advances in cockpit design and sensor fusion improve the pilot's situational awareness. In the air-to-air -air configuration, the Raptor carries six AIM-120 AMRAMs and two AIM-9 Sidewinders. The F-22 has a significant capability to attack surface targets. In the air-to-ground configuration, the aircraft can carry two 1,000-pound GBU-32 Joint Direct Attack Munitions internally and will use onboard avionics for navigation and weapons delivery support. In the future, the air-to-ground capability will be enhanced with the addition of an upgraded radar and up to eight small diameter bombs. The Raptor will also carry two AIM-120s and two AIM-9s in the air-to-ground configuration. The F-22 optimizes the maximum potential of both the computer technology and the pilot's tactical skills, leaving the tactical decisions up to the expert in the driver's seat. The cockpit is the first compatible with baseline night vision goggles and the canopy contains the largest piece of polycarbonate in the world. It's built to hold a single pilot with an ACES-2 ejection seat and upgraded life support systems. Finally, the cockpit is compatible with helmet-mounted systems which allow for better and more consistent focus while operating the aircraft. The helmet-mounted systems are some of the most advanced in the industry. The system fits onto the Raptor pilot's existing helmet, adding a monocle in front of one eye to display high-definition colour symbology. Unlike early iterations of the widely adopted joint helmet-mounted queuing system, it is adaptable to night vision goggles. These fit in front of the IP so the pilot can still see the data it displays in darkness. The modification also adds a somewhat domed visor, which does appear rather large under the Raptor's sleek canopy. The F-22's engines produce more thrust than any current fighter engine. The combination of sleek aerodynamic design and increased thrust allows the F-22 to cruise at supersonic airspeeds without using afterburner, a characteristic known as supercruise. Supercruise greatly expands the F-22's operating envelope in both speed and range over current fighters, which must use fuel-consuming afterburner to operate at supersonic speeds. 
The F-22 is capable of holding a large number of weapons in a stealthy manner. However, the variety of weapons compatible with the aircraft leaves is not vast. It's true that the Raptor can carry air-to-air -air missiles or air-to-ground missiles, but the size and type are pretty specific. Currently, the F-22 is designed to hold short-range AIM-9 Sidewinder and medium-range AIM-120 AMRAAM missiles for air-to-air -air combat. It can also hold a variety of JDAM bombs for air-to-ground combat. In order to prevent other countries from matching the F-22's abilities, the US has restricted sales outside of the country. The F-22 cannot be exported under US federal law to protect its stealth technology and classified features. Customers for US fighters are requiring earlier designs such as the F-15 Eagle and F-16 Fighting Falcon, or the newer F-35 Lightning II, which contains technology from the F-22 but was designed to be cheaper, more flexible and available for export. In September 2006, Congress upheld the ban on foreign F-22 sales. Despite the ban, the 2010 Defense Authorization Bill included provisions requiring the DOD to prepare a report on the costs and feasibility for an F-22 export variant, and another report on the effect of F-22 export sales on the US aerospace industry. Lockheed Martin is usually the name you hear closest associated with the F-22 Raptor. However, Boeing deserves a great deal of recognition for their contribution to the record-breaking jet as well. Boeing was hired to develop the wings of the F-22. Additionally, they developed the aft fuselage, avionics integration, and several electronic systems such as life support and fire protection and a number of training systems. The huge cost of F-22s is a source of criticism, and some believe employing a variety of producers contributed to the unsustainable price tag. The costliness of the F-22 Raptor is one of the aircraft's biggest criticisms. In 2013, Time magazine reported the cost per hour to operate the F-22A was $68,362. Now that's a lot, but not the most expensive on the list of military aircraft. For example, Air Force One was listed at $161,591 per hour. So what does this number include? This number means the cost of ownership, including modifications over the lifetime of the jet. In 2014, the F-22 fleet required over 40 hours of maintenance per flight hour. It seems that as the fleet has aged, the maintenance requirements have increased considerably. The life cycle cost of one F-22 Raptor is an estimated $334 million. One unit cost $150 million. As federal spending for education, healthcare and the arts plummets, many are reconsidering whether projects like the F-22 Raptor are ultimately worth their enormous price tag. While the Air Force had said the F-22's advanced capabilities simply weren't necessary for the previous conflicts, the plane also suffered from troubling issues of its own. Most disturbing were instances in which pilots reported feeling the symptoms of oxygen deprivation while flying the high-performance machines. From 2008 to 2012, pilots reported experiencing confusion, sluggishness or disorientation, sometimes even blackouts, at the controls of the plane more than two dozen times. In one instance, a pilot was so disoriented that his plane skimmed treetops before he was able to pull up and save himself. In May 2012, two Raptor pilots told CBS News 60 Minutes they were too afraid to fly the plane. In another, more drastic case, Air Force pilot Captain Jeff Haney died in a crash in 2010 after the oxygen system in his plane malfunctioned. After an investigation, the Air Force faulted Haney for failing to fly the plane properly while suffering a sense similar to suffocation. The plane's manufacturers eventually settled a wrongful death lawsuit with the Haney family. The F-22 fleet was grounded multiple times while the Air Force investigated the oxygen issue, and by late 2012, the service believed it had a handle on the problems. Several small ones rather than one big one. Eventually, the planes were allowed back in the air. The Raptor's stealth, high situational awareness and blistering performance are a clear advantage. Theoretically, an adept F-22 pilot should be able to sneak up on an enemy aircraft and deliver a knockout punch without the opponent ever knowing it was there. So where exactly has the F-22 seen real action? After years of research and development, it finally engaged in combat in 2014. F-22 fighter units have been frequently deployed to Kadena Air Base in Okinawa, Japan and other military bases around the world, but they never actually fired a shot until 2014. On the 22nd of September 2014, F-22s performed the type's first combat shots by conducting some of the opening strikes of Operation Inherent Resolve, the American-led invasion in Syria. Aircraft dropped 1,000-pound GPS-guided bombs on Syrian targets near Tishrin Dam. 
Between September 2014 and July 2015, F-22s flew 204 sorties over Syria, dropping 270 bombs at some 60 locations. Throughout their deployment, F-22s conducted close air support and also deterred Syrian, Iranian and Russian aircraft from attacking US-backed Kurdish forces and disrupting US operations in the region. F-22s also participated in the US strikes on pro-government forces in eastern Syria on the 7th of February 2018. These strikes notwithstanding, the F-22's main role in the operation was gathering intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance. It's unclear exactly how many casualties the F-22 Raptor is responsible for, but it most likely numbers between 3,000 and 5,000. Critics point out that there are many civilians in these statistics, in addition to members of the Islamic State. Each Raptor is capable of streaking into Syria near invisibly at close to 60,000 feet while supercruising at speeds of up to Mach 1.7 to hit four separate targets with up to eight small diameter bombs from over 50 miles away from their launch point. Alternatively, the F-22 can attack two larger strategic targets with a pair of 1,000 JDAMs from 15 miles away. This enhanced ground attack capability was part of the F-22's Increment 3.1 software upgrade, along with improved mapping and ground targeting capabilities. In total, the planes cost $10.91 billion, not counting operational costs, and were only deployed a handful of times. While this left many taxpayers scratching their heads, the F-22 Raptor is an undeniable feat of engineering.